I went to the deep uh, recesses of the internet last night. Mm-hmm. Ohio State message board stuff. Oh, they're feeling great going into this game. I was a little surprised how great they're feeling. I saw a couple like, we should win, but if we lose, it's no big deal. And I saw largely like, <laughs> yeah, right. I know, I thought the same thing. That's laughable. But I also saw Buckeye fans, they're kind of pretty confident in this. And I give them a lot of credit for that. This is supposed to be the most talented team maybe ever on paper. Yes. It's the most expensive roster they've ever bought. Even before NIL, we know they were buying players. Yep. Uh, and to have all that talent come to Eugene, they haven't been tested, I guess, this year. But most of those players have been in big games on the road, in different places. I don't think these players I don't I don't think Downs and Howard are coming into Eugene and going, Oh my God, I, I've never been in a big loud stadium before. I don't know right. what to do. <laughs> right. And I just was a little surprised, or maybe I shouldn't have been, but like how cocky, confident Buckeye fan is kind of going into this thing. Yeah, I am a little surprised by that based on their last couple of years. Ohio State's one of the best programs in the country. We all know it. I don't think anybody would disagree with the fact that they're the more talented team on the field. I don't know how big the gap is. We'll find out when the game's played. So Bartu was asked that yesterday. He he kind of said they're slight lean Ohio State, but we it's not to. a they're, huge gap. It's not a huge gap, but they're the better team on paper. I, I don't even disagree with that. I think the question is travel and home game and atmosphere and does all that come into effect and does Oregon have one of those games where because of the moment and the environment it all comes together I think Alabama Georgia first half right we all know how we feel about Alabama at this point what were we thinking of at halftime of the Georgia game when it was what 30 to 7 or 30 to 3 or whatever the score was yeah like oh my god they everything aligned the stars aligned they played way over their skis and Georgia got hit by a sledgehammer and didn't know how to respond, and eventually they did. I think that's the thought of Oregon having a chance to win this weekend. It's just that environment and the energy and the buzz going into it that you can ride the wave. But Ohio State fan having that level of confidence, considering the last few years they've been elite but unable to beat the one elite team on their schedule, is is a little comical to me. Um, They have had a very similar run. Ryan Day's accomplished more as a head coach than Dan Lanning has. Part of that is because he's been a head coach four years longer than him. Mm -hmm. But they've been very similar the last two years. Hell, last year I thought they were identical teams. Maybe one of the best in the country, in the conversation at least. But when push came to shove and you needed to win the biggest game on your schedule against a massive rival, what did they both do? They both came up short. Now, Oregon had to go play theirs again in the Pac-12 championship game. The Big Ten was still doing the dumb division thing, so Ohio State didn't get another crack at them. But breaking news, I would have picked Michigan to beat Ohio State again because they had their number and they were more physical at the line of scrimmage. So if you want to come in with a slight confidence, like, hey, we feel like we're better. We added the best safety in the country in the portal. We added one of the best running backs in the country in the portal. We have one of the best defensive lines. We added a number one recruit in the country in Jeremiah Smith. uh, One of the receivers back this weekend. I don't blame them at all for saying, like, I think we got a good chance to win this weekend. But a rational confidence in downplaying the atmosphere that they're going to play in is what I think just in looking at the online circles this weekend is making Oregon fan chuckle a little bit. I, I think the other part, too, is it's interesting. I um, I really enjoy having Josh Pate on every week. I think he's as informed on college football and the big teams as anybody in America. I really do. It was interesting because I, I didn't really bat an eye at it. I went home and I read about him. So the offensive line was an area that they that he highlighted specifically, and he may prove to be right on Saturday. Do you know who was recognized as the best center in college football last week? Poncho? No, mm. Ohio State's guy. Mm. Uh, and it's just, I was reading about him. He got the highest grade, from, and it's PFF, so it's one website, yeah. one metric. But the highest graded center in college football last week and was that McLaughlin kid that we highlighted yesterday, jokingly kept having those bad snaps at in Alabama. The Rose Bowl, yeah. He's had, an, I guess he's had a remarkable year from a PFF grade standpoint whatever you want to use that metric. And it just was interesting because we were talking about how that was a weakness, and I went home, and he had the highest grade, and their offensive line has been largely complimented of the way they have performed thus far. I think opponents matter as well, and so take that into an account. Yeah. How many points – this is this may be a defense – I don't know where you'd lean on the over-under. It's like 53 and a half. So there, it's like, is this yeah, in the 30s? Is this right in the in, 20s? Yeah. That's right in that range of... It's a hard thing to gauge of yeah. what kind of game are we going to get? Is it baltimore Cincy, high mid-30s? Or is it going to be 27-24-ish wheelhouse? I, I didn't know where to lean yeah. on that. Thinking about it, how many points in your mind does Oregon need to score to win? If they get to... I think their defense is giving up seven. 
13. I'll go look and, and double check that. That might be higher. That sounds about, I mean, the Boise State is the one where they gave up more than 20. Uh, and then the other part of the UCLA game was they didn't give up a touchdown in that game, but they, the defense didn't, I should say. The offense gave up the touchdown, not the defense. They held them to two field goals. So right now, Ohio State's giving up 6.8. They're number <laughs> yeah. one in America here. Yeah. Again, opponent matters. Yeah. Oregon is right. It's, it's exactly 17. 17, okay. Yeah. I, I would say if you get to 31, not a guaranteed win, because I don't know how the game's going to play out. If you're sub-30, Look, I got a lot of confidence in Oregon's defense. I think they're int- incredibly talented, and they've been playing better and better each week. But you're also facing a, a, a non-human at wide receiver yeah. and one of the best backfields in the country and an offensive line to the numbers and metrics point to that's pretty solid so far this year. So I don't know what you're going to be able to, to efficiently hold them down to. But I, if you get to 31, you tell me they get to 31, I feel better about your chances of winning the game. 31-28, 34-31, somewhere in that range. Like That, to me, is the final score that I'm seeing in my head. So by that logic, I would take the over. But a lot of it, I think, will have to do with the start. Because sometimes, like both these offenses, because of their quarterbacks and some of the stuff they've shown on film this year, have a bit of that vibe of, like, I could see them getting off to slow starts and just, just being a little game. shaky, a yeah. little tight, a little uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like, one of the random things that's sticking out in my head is that I desperately want them to win the toss and be able to defer to this. I don't want to start the game with the ball. I want to start the I want to rev the crowd up, let them be on defense get first. Stop. Even if you give yeah. up a score, at least you know you get the ball to start the second half. There is no demoralizing feeling more in a big game than getting the ball first, going three and out in front of your home crowd, <laughs> punting it to the opponent, and they find a way to score. It's just like, oh, God. here we, Just that start is a disaster in my head, so please win the toss and defer to the second half. Start on defense. Be a good poll question. Anything more demoralizing than your... <laughs> Your home team getting the ball first, going three and out, and the other team scoring. All that angst and energy in the stadium. Everybody's ready to explode. It'll build up even more. One yard run, incomplete pass, sack. Oh, God, this is uh, is a bad day. Where are you at right now? (laughs) I mean, I'm somewhere in between. I think Ohio State's the better team. Um, I, I think I've landed on that as well. It's not that Oregon can't win. No. We get to our B, big PP picks. Hell, everybody thought Oregon was a better team than Washington last year. I do think your defense is the better side of the ball. Yeah. But, damn it, those receivers. Oh, my God. I just, I'm just i curious to see what LaPoy and Landing come up with to, to defend that because Ohio State's clearly going to try to run Howard and their, their double-headed monster in the backfield. Yeah. Those receivers, they're just something to try to cover. Putting guys on islands could be so dicey. Could I? I just I think I lean Ohio State with that still being a close game. Yeah, I think the the one thing that that I'm hanging my hat on is last year you had you had one team on your schedule that can match you talent wise, and that was Washington. Right. You did not have the ability to play them at home. You had to go on the road to Seattle, and that was one of the craziest environments. Our, our buddy Pate was up there. He said one of the loudest he's ever been in. That, that was a tough place to go play. The other yeah, one was, was in Las Vegas. Great. And the other one was in Las Vegas. And so that was more of a 50-50 crowd. But it wasn't. you didn't have this behind you. Right. This is what you've been waiting for. And Lanning has had big games at home. You know, the end of the first year, they obviously let the one slip against Washington. They had the Colorado game. There was a lot of hype going into that, but Colorado sucked. This is the first time he's had an opponent of this level and magnitude come to town and have that force and crowd behind him. It's, so that's the one thing I'm hanging. Like if this game was in Columbus, I know they won there a couple of years ago. I'd probably feel a little bit different, but that, that place is going to be insane on Saturday. I, I think that goes back to what I said on, on Monday or Tuesday show dirt of when we talked about the coach, the pressure, by the way, Canell said it's more day than it is landing. I And I maintain that. I and, think and it you, is too. And then you guys both may be right. I, I'll put a poll question up on that citing Danny Canell. I, I go back to what I said, though, and why I said landing. All the narrative-based stuff has been in his favor by a mile. The recruiting has been elevated for Mario, which I didn't think was possible. Mm-hmm. The noise and hype, he's built it up every single year. And he hasn't been here that long, but year three, going in, Duck and River, Big Ten, we're that team out west, and right? Like, he has kind of all the juice. You talk with your helmet clips, all of it. And and the reason I think it's landing is this kind of feels like the moment to capture it. It's not that they can't lose and not go to a playoff and still win a playoff game or yep. get to the Big Ten title game and get a rematch. Certainly, we understand the new landscape. It's you're at home. They're slightly more talented than you on paper. Mm-hmm. But the two time zone thing, the Big Ten thing, I just look at this and I, I just think for all of this buildup of landing as a coach, 
there are still a lot of questions about him. And this feels like a big weekend that he can start to kind of back what the noise has been. It's not that he hasn't had success, double-digit win seasons, all that. It's that this is the biggest test. Washington yep. was your biggest one. Mm-hmm. You didn't. You came up short. Okay, but this is an even bigger one than that. This is Ohio State in your building, Big Ten, new conference, top five, primetime NBC. And that's why Eileen Lanning is, this just all feels like it's building to, is this the kind of coming out party of, yep, that's why everybody gives the noise to him. He has been waiting to hang one of those pelts on his wall, and he's not been able to do it yet. Now, I disagree with some who want to downplay. I, UCLA was a good team two years ago, not to this level. But that was a college game day game, top 10 borderline matchup, top 10 win. Utah went on to win the conference. They beat them with Bo on one leg. Yeah, like, I thought the Utah win those was were his best call, one. Those yeah. were good wins. Yes. Now, not to this level, but those are this idea that he's never won a meaningful game right. is just dumb and laughable to me. But he's waiting for one of these pelts to hang on his wall. The, the 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 balance that I will have in this game if he loses is that this doesn't mean that he can't do it. It doesn't mean that he won't do it. It doesn't mean that their season is over. All of that stuff and all that perspective has to be discussed on Monday. But there's no doubt that this is a massive opportunity for him. And primarily just for, not just for this year, but when you start reading into what's going on on the sidelines this weekend and how many big-time recruits for the 24 class, the 25 class, the 26 class. There's an like, Ohio State pledge on the five sidelines. Star, one of the best recruits yeah. in the country is a five-star corner offered, and he's in, he's a commit to Ohio State. It's the first time he's seeing Ohio State play is in Oregon this weekend. Yep. Like, this is, like, you win one of these, what it means for you long-term in recruiting to say, hey, we're right there, we're ready to compete for championships, it would be massive for him short-term and long-term. Uh- 